So judging from my latest YouTube analytics, among the more popular videos that I have received recently over the past couple of weeks have been the used car reviews featuring particularly the BMW F30 3 Series and also the E84 X1. So that suggests to me that there is quite a demand for used continental cars below the 100,000 ringgit price bracket which those two models occupy. So today we are still examining that price bracket but we are jumping over to the Mercedes camp. What I'm driving here today this is the W204C class. It is my favorite of all the C-Class generations. Now, if you are a regular viewer of this channel or if you are a subscriber, if you have not, please hit the subscribe button. You would have remembered that last year I had featured a C200 compressor in this channel. That car was what I called an MCO orphan and was stuck two years, never moved and the owner actually called the Ewo Club car wash team to go there, retrieve the car, bring it back to our shop, clean it up, have it serviced, and return to the road. That was the compressor model, the pre-facelift. The W204C class was sold for quite a long period of time, actually. It was launched in 2007, and it was sold all the way until 2014. So this car competed head-on against two generations of the 3 Series, namely the E90 and later on the F30 during its initial days. The full range of offerings, of engine choices that the W204 came with is too long for me to go in depth in one video. But suffice to say, it started off with what we call the compressor engines. Those were the 1.8 liter supercharged engines. They also had V6 models as well, but majority of the cars in our market are the 1.8 compressor engines. Then in 2010, Mercedes swapped out the compressor engines and replaced them with turbocharged equivalents those wore the cgi badge and then in 2011 they facelifted the c-class they dropped the cgi badge but they persisted with the 1.8 turbo engine and in all honesty that 1.8 liter cgi engine i actually rather like it so far i have had very positive experiences with that engine both on the c-class as well as the E-Class. The funny thing with Mercedes of this era, the 204 and the 212 era, is that maybe Mercedes was trying to transition between NA to turbocharged and they had a long drawn out path with it. So they had the 1.8 CGI as the sort of like the bread and butter and suddenly poof, there's a 3.5 V6 up there. And needless to say, in the Malaysian market where road tax plays a key factor in buying consideration, the 1.8 CGI's were very, very popular engines amongst Mercedes buyers. In fact, a used car dealer once shared, he observed it is easier to sell a BMW with a 3-litre engine compared to a Mercedes with a 3-litre engine. You see, the W204, although most of the units that you would find in the market are the 1.8 CGI variants, they also had a small number of C300s with a 3-liter V6. And that is a developing market special because in other markets, what they have is that they have the 1.8 CGI engines and then suddenly it will be the 3.5-liter 350 CGI engine, naturally aspirated direct injection. That engine, Mercedes-Benz now offered in Malaysia due to high sulfur fuel. But... The 300 engine, which is basically an older generation 3-litre port injection V6 with 230 horsepower, they offered that at one point in time with the W204 C-Class and also the W212 E-Class. Not many markets received that engine. So this 
particular unit of the C-Class that I'm driving today, this one is something a bit special. It is a coupe. And the C-Class coupe was introduced with the facelift model. So the pre-facelift model did not have a proper coupe. Well, it sort of did, but we don't count the CLC. Because you see, the CLC is that weird abomination of a car that used the W203 C-Class platform. They stuck the 204 C-Class nose in front and called it a day. If you were to sit inside that car, you would see that, hey, it's a W203 interior, but with a W204 exterior. So that car was a bit of an unmitigated disaster. Thankfully, Mercedes never offered that officially in Malaysia. Some parallel imported units are running around, but that's not a car we recommend anybody to buy. But we believe that car eventually paved the way for the A-Class, but that's another story altogether. So the C-Class Coupe, this body style was introduced with the facelift. And quite interestingly, at that time, yeah, Mercedes had a lot of weird things going on at that time. At that time, Mercedes also used the 204 C-Class platform to underpin the E-Class Coupe. And when they introduced the C-Class Coupe, basically what we have is that the 204 C-Class platform was underpinning two different Coupe models. So anyways, the 204 C-Class, this, as I said, is my favorite C-Class of all time. And there are a few reasons for it. One, I like the styling. I like the way it looks. The exterior, it's not as pretty as the 205 C-Class, but it has that honest simplicity to its design. It has that honest elegance, the lines. There is just that tautness and that tension in the way they styled it. This is a car that is compact in size. It doesn't try to appear bigger than it is. It actually does not over-project its size and it looks good for it. Mercedes got the styling actually very right with this car. Now, the interior of this car, well, this button-laden dashboard here, uh, it has not aged well at all in terms of design. But in terms of quality, this car really still feels solid. I mean, every switch, all the knobs, everything, it still exudes excellent tactile feel. I mean, my favorite point of interaction of with this car is actually the gear lever. When you move this traditional old-fashioned mechanical gear lever, the shift action is extremely positive and it's just so satisfying to move the shifter between the various positions and everything, all the switches still feels like it is brand new. If you are thinking that this car is the way it is because it is a garage queen, it is underutilized, I can most certainly assure you it is not. It has 164,000 kilometers on the odometer. This is a proper high mileage unit. But the interior, this looks half the age. The exterior is where you can see straight away that this car, well, it has not been pampered by the owner, let's just say, because the paintwork of this car, the kindest I would say is that it needs a proper polish. This car feels mechanically solid, but aesthetically needs a bit of work. But that's the thing. You see, it's so obvious that this car is so well used, but everything just feels tight, feels well screwed together. This car feels like it easily has another eight or 10 years of painless service left in him. And I mean painless service. Now, th this is the C180. And when you say C180 from this generation, there are two possible engines. There's a 1.8 liter engine. There's a 1.6 liter engine, depending on the year of manufacture. 
quite interestingly, both of them are rated with the same outputs, 156 horsepower, 250 newton meters of torque. Now, I've been told that this car is using the 1.8 liter engine. And now, thus far, right at this moment, I am driving in traffic jam, so I can't really push the car. But in my experience, it hardly feels underpowered. The engine is punchy enough for day-to-day -day use. It has enough torque for me to keep up with point and shoot city traffic. It's just that in the highways, when I want to carry higher speeds, we will need to work the engine a bit. And if let's say like in instances where suddenly somebody cuts in front of you and you have to slam your brakes down to 80 kilometers per hour to regain that speed you lost, yeah, you will need to work that engine a little bit. But in point and shoot traffic, no problem. This engine is more than enough and it pulls well it is smooth it is refined the gearbox is a five speed unit but i think it works it it works well enough it shifts smoothly enough as a matter of fact sometimes i feel that it is a better gearbox than the later gen 7g or 9g tronic because Maybe because those newer gearboxes have too many gears to play with. This one has five. It learns to make the best out of it. It shifts well enough. I have no complaints whatsoever. Now, handling-wise is another reason why I like the W204 C-Class. This C-Class, I believe, is the C-Class that came closest to match the BMW 3 Series in the dynamics department because the W205 that came later on certainly did not have the same kind of handling sure-footedness or solidity that the 204 has. You see, the 204, firstly, I would say that the steering is beautifully weighted and it's nicely rich in feedback. The chassis very faithfully goes where you point the steering to and it is a very predictable car to drive if you choose to push it to the limit now before i proceed with the walk around video let me get one thing out of the way this car's condition it is mechanically solid the interior is in relatively good nick but the exterior well, the kindest words I would say is that this car needs a polish. See, the usage pattern of this car quite evidently is that it has been well used by its previous owner, mechanically well cared for, interior kept relatively clean, but just that the exterior has been through, well, some rather careless car washing i would say but nevertheless it looks like it is on its original paint for one and all the body panels look straight so you it does not look like it's been repainted before neither does it look like it has been in a serious accident before so from the looks of it what you need is just a proper polish and this car will look almost as good as new so this is the C-Class Coupe, the example that you see here, this is a C180 but finished with AMG line trim. So you notice that the bumper has a more aggressive flaring, it has this more angular edge at the corner and this low, at the lower daytime running lights here. So as I said earlier, the Coupe is only available with the facelift model and personally however i actually much prefer the c-class with its pre-facelift design i much like the headlights in a more conventional shape but this facelift version has its appeal mostly because it has a substantially upgraded interior which we will get onto later on but outside here um, first thing we will see is that these updated headlights these facelifted headlights immediately brings the c-class in line at that time with the 212 e-class in terms of the shape of the headlight now this being the coupe model you get the avant-garde grille as standard which generally is 
actually the preferred setup by Malaysian consumers. Malaysian consumers in the C-Class and E-Class segment, they aren't so big fans of the classic Mercedes grille, which I think is a bit of a waste because I especially like the E-Class with the classic star on top of the bonnet design. I think that is a proper classy E-Class appearance, but that is just me. So we come to the side, you can see you have these uh, seven spoke AMG wheels. You can see this using the polish as well but wow check it out the discs are cross drilled so here the side mirror these are the face lifted side mirrors and if you didn't know this mercedes was actually the company that pioneered side mirror mounted indicators and that was the reason why back in the 2010s bmw was amongst the last to introduce side mirror mounted signals i think because Mercedes pioneered it. And here in the C-Class facelift, you've got this quite distinctive two-claw design, which I think is rather unique. Now, this is something that uh, escaped my memory. I am surprised rather to see this C-Class here does not have frameless doors. And this being the first time Mercedes introduced the C-Class Coupe, quite unlike the 205 C-Class that followed, the 204 C-Class Coupe is almost like a two-door version of the sedan. Whereas in the 205, there's a bit more differentiation in terms of a more unique front end. The side mirrors are mounted differently between the sedan and the Coupe and a totally different rear end. The 204 Coupe, basically, it's like a two-door version of the sedan. Well, of course, with a more unique window line. Here, you've got this kink here rising up so it's got its unique silhouette but the lower body basically it's identical to the sedan and we come to the back we see the familiar tail lamps of the w204 of course here in the facelift it is updated with the led bar design okay now the tail lights i actually like the facelift more so with the 204 i actually like the pre-facelift front end but Definitely at the tail end, I much like the facelifted car better. And this example here being AMG line trim, you can see at the bottom of the bumper, there's this diffuser element. And this being the C180, you've got a very modest single exhaust setup. But from here, you can see straight on dead at the back, it's basically almost identical sheet metal to the sedan. So, popping the boot, well, luggage space is pretty decent. Okay, so you've got hooks here, one on each side. Underneath here, you've got a space saver spare tire. All right, you've got a netted compartment here. And you can see the boot floor rises up a bit because when you pop the 60-40, split folding seats okay what you get is that the floor rises up so that you get a seamless joining with the rear seat bags right so we check out the cabin now the seats folded down and you can see here, it joins seamlessly. They raise the boot floor so that it joins seamlessly. But the reason why, of course, we have this compromise is so that Mercedes can give better thigh supports, make the rear seats more comfortable. So ingress and egress is relatively easy. And uh, I'm 170 centimeters tall. Here at the back, I've got just enough headroom above me but lean angle is good i've got fixed head rests at the back thigh support is decent i've got good leg room as well in front of me this sports seats i believe well no pockets here whatsoever it's just like a whole plastic piece here at the back you've got rear acorn vents that's nice and here you've got a 12 volt socket together with a little ash tray so this is a strict four seater there's this storage tray here it's fabric line two molded cup holders but looking at the construction of this i believe there actually has to be a retractable lid inside here that probably broke off or was removed 
so the isofix mounts are here you open them up okay it's a velcro snap op to open and close so at the back here i would say it's pretty spacious accommodations the seat belts are held in place so that at the b pillar here the bottom part well it slides freely here so unlike the e-class there is no automatic tray to push the seat belt to the front but what they do is that they have this so that uh, you can pull it forward more conveniently and then it slides out of the way when rear passengers need to get in and out of the car so to exit just push this forward Okay, so we check out the front all black door card nicely contrasted with this brushed metal finish here mercedes does have this nice practice of putting the seat control adjustment at the door and it makes perfect sense why because if i was someone big size for example i have the luxury of standing here and adjusting the seats to fit myself before i step in so i don't have to bend down and reach the seat controls here i can just do it while standing here and as i step inside looking over at the front passenger door i see the controls almost perfectly mirrored we have got three memory settings together with a door lock and unlock button for the front passenger so kudos to mercedes for that now this example does not have keyless entry so i won't have to start the car the old-fashioned way so this being an amg sport trim you've got metal pedals down there and this is one of the last mercedes models to have the uh, classic foot operated parking brake where you step on it to engage and you pull this lever to disengage okay now as i've shown you from the outside this car is a relatively well maintained example but it has been through harsh use and in that context i would say the quality of this cabin is pretty amazing everything here still feels solid no creaks all the buttons here still exude positive tactile feeling the build quality here feels better than the present generation mercedes if you sit in let's say like the current a class the build quality versus this one no contest it's just that this design together with this keypad this really honestly it looks out of date but quality wise this cabin is just sensational and listen to the sound that the gear lever makes and the positiveness of the action i really enjoy just moving the gear up and down like that so you've got brushed metal finish here okay and in ashtray cigarette lighter so the control scheme here is not so straightforward this is the generation where bmw's iDrive was a superior setup to the mercedes command so here you press this on button then what you have is that this is the volume control this is the knob which you interact with the screen so you see up close there's this three level of menus that you navigate and here uh, unlike more modern setups this screen does not show you vehicle information it does not give you access to the trip computer so this is still really early generation infotainment system okay the instrument cluster it's i would say very beautifully crafted it's a very pleasant sight to look at and this was the generation that mercedes had this very unique speedometer design whereby the gears of the speedometer is not at the middle but along the perimeter of the meter so it's a waste that in the age of digital clusters this art form is no longer there but it's as a mechanical engineer i really really appreciate the way this is designed it is a work of engineering art i would say so you come down here this is a lidded cup holder and this lid now you'll be figuring how to open right actually what you have is you have one button here and also another button here that you press to release 
okay and it is a decently sized compartment here got two usb ports one cable here as well so here also this is another compartment this piece of rubber is removable so if you want you can use this as a sort of like a rubbish area to dump all your rubbish and then you can just take it out okay you see the way this is is made you see those grooves on the surface this is really meant for you to grip the thing this way and pull it up all right so now you drop this back in and off you go so the 204's cabin in terms of design even this facelift model is a substantially improved one over the pre-facelift it really is an outdated design no two ways about it no two ways about it but in terms of quality it is superlative everything in here it's just rock solid and considering the this the way this car was i would say quite well used i am thoroughly impressed that this car rolls about with barely any squeaks or rattles which is testament to the build quality so now i have driven my share of mercedes cars over the years and in all honesty none of them exude the same kind of solid tactile feel at least none of the modern ones exude the same kind of solidness that you get here in the 204 and the 212 generation never mind the old 123s or 124s if you sit in a 205 c class you sit in the new a class and you jump into this these guys here this 204 here feels built like a brick in comparison and one more thing when i drive these cars it feels like mercedes put in the effort put in more effort to give these cars proper fine tuning because whenever i drive a w205 c class or a 213 e class I, I don't get that feeling of engineering integrity that i got with these generation of benzes so every time when i drive a 204 c class or a 212 e class it may not have the same kind of dynamism as an equivalent bmw 3 series or 5 series but i enjoy experiencing that honest mechanical integrity of these cars there is just that solid feeling in these cars that you know you can sense you can feel the effort that the engineers put into them and that as car enthusiasts sometimes is really what we ask for we want to feel the effort that the engineers put in when they engineered these cars when they designed these cars and when they built these cars so in my opinion i have there's no two ways about it of all the generations of the c class the 204 really is the best of them it is the best handling of them it is the best built of them not the prettiest i admit but definitely also the best to drive the handling is properly assuring and it is well balanced against a reasonably pliant ride so if you are looking for a used continental car you're looking for an alternative to the f30 as your first continental car and or if you are more partial to mercedes then the 204 actually is something worth considering definitely in terms of resale value it will cost more to purchase than an equivalent bmw especially if you consider it against the e90 but whatever it is prices of these things are now at very very attainable levels so it's not like you are having to pay an arm and a leg for one of these these things are also now down to honda city and toyota vios prices this coupe that i am driving now here i think can be yours for less than eighty thousand ringgit but it is a cash buy mechanically this car i believe is buy and drive the interior it feels tip top it's just that i highly highly recommend that you get a proper polishing job done on this car before taking delivery but otherwise it's a damn nice car 
damn quite it's it's nice it's this is i think one of the best handling modern mercedes-benz models okay so that's it from me today do share with me your thoughts in the comment section what do you think of the 204 c class do you agree with me that this is maybe the best c class of all time or do you think the 205 is a better car no right or wrong just let me know share your thoughts in the comment section if you enjoyed this video of course please give it a thumbs up and if you have not done so subscribe to my channel do also check out the channel of all my other horizon team members as well okay so till my next video take care stay safe i'll see you soon so upon hearing our recommendation the seller of this c180 coupe has agreed to give the car a full three-step polish to restore the gloss and shine of its original factory paint through the efforts of the Evo Club car wash team, we have managed to remove all the swirl marks, holograms and light scratches that has accumulated on the clear coat of this car for over a decade. If you are interested to arrange for a viewing of the C-Class Coupe or if you require cleaning and detailing service or advice for your car, please contact the Evo Club car wash team using the number on your screen now.